Once again, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 11 is saying, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born a, and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to to dance like David we should dance verse 5 says and a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones we are in the image and likeness of a stone a brick is a man like the brick that was inside of a uh, 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 tower of Babel that was something that man did but but God said that he wants us to be like lively stones even the rock shall cry out once again it says a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones a time to embrace and a time to refrain from bracing. You can't hug everybody all the time. You can't console you all the time. Sometimes you just got to sit there and we got to watch you go through what you're going through. We don't want to get uh, in the midst or involved with what God is doing in your life. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to sew or, or sew back together like the like the great physician god sometimes opens us up and put us on the uh, uh table and provides spiritual surgery and sometimes it doesn't feel too good to get us back together again but that's why there is healing is there a bomb in gilead verse number six once again says to a time to gain a time to lose a time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. Hallelujah. That'll preach right there. And a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. A time of peace in the midst of everything that is going on today with all the issues, the problems, the economy going down, down, down. Marriage is being torn apart, a, a, a high divorce rate, a, a, a men not being fathers to their children, women not being a, a wives to their husbands. All of these problems, all the issues, disease, war, pestilence. Hallelujah. So the question is, and the title of my message today is, so what's the good news? So what's the good news? Be blessed, people of God. What's the good news? Amen. Yeah. Yo, Kansas, this one's for you. Yo, Philly, this one's for you. This beat time clinic. Hallelujah. So what's the good news? What's the good news? What's the good news? We hear about all of the bad things that's going on. Sometimes when you come to church, you hear about all the bad stuff that you do. Sometimes you uh, have all types of issues and problems going on. But I, just like I told somebody the other day, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Who is the king of glory, strong and mighty? One thing I will let you know is that I, I, I have compassion on people, but I'm not going to feel sorry for you when God has taken you through your process. 
But preacher, is that really the good news? Yes, I'm going to share you the good news this, this, this morning. It, it, it may seem like it's kind of tough or kind of hard, but God said that, 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 that what type of soldier does not like going through basic training? In order for you to go through basic training, you have to enlist. And we're in a season where we need to re-enlist into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. What type of soldier lays down his arms and says, I give up. I can't do this anymore. No, 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 no. We're not going to feel sorry for you. Why? Because in this season and the time that we're living in, with all the things that's going on, the question that the people of the world are asking, so what's the good news. What's the good news about the Casey Anthony case? How could they let the, a situation like that, how could the, 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 the situation that the crime, how could they let that particular situation slip through the cracks of their fingers? What's good about that? But I'm reminded that God says that he is the judge. Uh, I was going to preach a message in the future called, here come the judge. Here come the judge. The judge, the great divine judge, which at the end of the age, he's going to sit you down and he's going to open up several books and he's going to ask you, what have you or how have you conducted your life? And were you obedient to my word? Not my mama, not my daddy, nor my sister, nor my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But at that time, you may not be able to pray. It's going to be you, and you're going to have to be accountable for what and how you have lived your life. Not about being perfect, but whether you are in Jesus Christ. So what's the good news? What's the good news? What's so good about that? What's so good about Amy Winehouse dying? What's so good about that? We saw that she was on a road to destruction. She says, I, 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 they told me that I had to go to rehab, but I said, no, no, no. A lot of people don't want to get fixed. I'm preaching right there. A lot of people want to stay. But the Bible also says that the wages of sin or the cost of sin is death. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes it's mental. Sometimes you can lose your mind and not be able to regain it. Once again, God won't leave crumbs inside of the forest so that you'll be able to find yourself. Every now and then he sets up a map. Sometimes we are new to the things of Christ. He sets up a map. A map is something where it has specific directions that gets you from point A to point B to point C. But then when you start getting closer to God, God begins to spill coffee on the map. <laughs> he doesn't give you specific directions. Go here, go there. I want you to say this to this particular person. I want you to call this particular person. I want you to help me. No, 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 no. Because in order for you to grow, I have to back up a little bit. If you know you are maybe like my little boy Jane when he was taking his baby steps and Jane and, uh, and Andre when they was uh, on by the coffee table and they were picking up all of those uh, uh, Cheerios. I don't know why people like Cheerios. But, well, I'm just saying. Uh, he was going around cruising around the table. He couldn't crawl but then he got up and started cruising around the table. Started picking up the Cheerios and then after a while he started walking and then we started running we started running after him. The specific instructions is guidance in the very beginning hands on. Hands on. That's even the way that I deal with ministry. I'm hands on at first, but after a while, I'm going to see if you're going to sink or swim. Because if I don't allow for you to uh, uh, be able to fly on your own, then I'm going to cripple you. And you are not going to be strong enough to do things on your own. H how are we going to be able to be the good news to one another? So what's the good news? Path of destruction. Lives are not being changed. There, there is no anointing in many of our churches. There's a lot of fanfare, but no anointing. Why is that? I, 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 I suffer the point where we come to a point in our ministry where uh, God writes above the, the, the pane of our window saying, Ichabod, or the glory has departed. So what's the good news? The only thing in this life that is constant is change. You're not going to have things the way that you want all of the time. I'm sorry to give you that announcement. Things are not going to be uh, 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 peachy keen all the time. I, I, I remember that's like I said last week. You got to fight the devil. The devil is not going to let you get anything easy. The bigger the calling on your life, sometimes the bigger the falls that you have to take. But I'm reminded that by the psalmist, Donna McClinker says, get back up again. Get back up. You got to get back up again. It's not how many times you fall. It's how many times you get back up. I, uh, I had to preside over my grandfather's funeral yesterday. I didn't even know I had to do it. I thought I was going to be able to sit down. But the preacher said, oh, you his grandson? Oh, you got the collar? Come on up. You're going to lead us in, and, and preside over your grandfather's funeral. 
And that was a trial or a test for me. It was something that I did not want to do. Uh, that's why God says that he's not a, a cares about your emotions. Sometimes people feel like helping. Sometimes people don't feel like helping. Sometimes people feel like being on time. Sometimes people don't feel like being on time. Sometimes pe people feel like singing and feel like worshiping. Sometimes people don't feel like worshiping. You're like a, 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 the Bible says, what the Bible says, you are a, a, a double-minded person, unstable in all your ways. In order for you to be a who? A good soldier. You have to be. You must be rooted and planted in the word of God and knowing that although seasons change, people change, all those things, knowing that all of those things change, you must be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water bearing much fruit. There's one thing that I truly despise is when I see someone with a whole bunch of talent and not, they're not producing any fruit. I get the righteous indignation just like Jesus when he was walking by the fig tree and he says, why don't you have any fruit? You're supposed to be producing in this season. Cursed are you. But God, great God, sent his second man, Adam, Jesus Christ, who bared much fruit, which is you and I, in the spirit. While he was there on the cross, they pointed into his sign and then he began to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, just like it says in, in, the, in, the, in the banner of our own ministry. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, which says, I will pour upon my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. I'm also reminded that we're supposed to be able to do things in season. And out of season. I preach when I don't feel like it. I preach when I'm sick in my body. My throat is, I still do it in season and out of season because my life is not my own. If you want to have the anointing of this house, then you're going to have to work as hard as I work. All, not only on my knees, but also in, with my hands and also in prayer. Many people want to have what the successful people have, but they do not want to work the way that they work. The only thing in this life is, that is constant is change. I'm also reminded by one of the revelations that they were saying about my grandfather yesterday, and he died when he was 94 years old. They said he was a strapping, strong man. He used to get a little tipsy, and he used to be out pulling, pull, pull, well, they pulled my, uh, when my uh, grandfather was inside of a, the classroom, and he was about nine years old, the people from the forest and from the Portwood factory came and pulled him up from out of the classroom and put him in the middle of the words and say, from this day forward, you're going to work. He didn't even have an option to continue his education. They came and got him from out of the classroom, but yet we complain about <laughs> the air conditioner that we're in. And whether somebody's going to come to it, a, a, our house or not, on time to eat dinner. They took him out of the woods and they put him in the field and they sat him right there and he began to work and work. That was a change. And one of the magnificent things is, is that he was able to transition from his tens or his, 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 his child life to his adult life until his 40s and 50s, 50s and 60s, 60s and 70s, 70s and 80s, 80s and to 90s. And he was strong, and he was loyal, and he loved his family throughout. He saw four of his children die before his eyes. He saw his wife die before his eyes, and yet he was still there, still calling his children, saying, I love you every week. So what's the good news about that? The good news about that is that that is a living example of how we should be and how we should conduct our lives. He wasn't a perfect man. Oh, no, he wasn't a perfect man. But what it was is that he allowed for himself to be perfected. He said at the age of 68, because he was always very strong and strapping, he used to throw those, those, those big giant tree trunks, 200 pounds, just tossing them like it wasn't even nothing. All of those years just tossing them like it wasn't even nothing. He used to beat two and three people all at the same time. I'm telling you, he was no joke. Sometimes you always think that the mean people are the ones who live a long time. <laughs> but he was a strong man. He was hardened by the, the things that were going on at that life. He lived through the Depression. He lived through uh, uh, the Civil Rights era. He lived through the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. He lived through all of those things, the death of his. And then we complain and say that we are going through so much. You ain't gone through nothing. <laughs> because the Bible says that God won't put more on you than you can bear. So what's the good news? Once again, the only thing in this life that is constant is change. In change. And even in my last example of him, they said the last 25 years of his life, and after he was throwing and tossing all those tree trunks and, and things of that nature, he realized as his strength was diminishing, 
He looked up to heaven, as my uncle was saying when he was giving his eulogy yesterday, he looked up to heaven and said, God, I just realized that all of the things I've done, it wasn't me. It wasn't of my own strength. I was blessed to do all these things. And then the latter half of his life, he began to get closer and closer to God. He began to talk to himself. This man that used to not say anything. This man that used to be in bar fights. That used to run around. and He was a rolling stone. But then in the latter part of his life, he began to get closer to God. And closer. It is said, or, or legend says that when one individual of the family leaves that is very elderly, that means a baby is on the way. I don't know who's pregnant. I don't know who's pregnant. You know, don't look around. Everybody look around. <laughs> but when one person leaves the family and goes back to heaven, one is coming from heaven. The only thing in this life that is constant is change. In contrast, the things that sit outside of time are permanent and unchanging like the hand of God in our affairs. James chapter 4 verse 14 says that our life is but a vapor. That's it. Even 94 years in our eyes seems like it's a long, long time. But to God, who is not even constrained by this thing that is called time, he sits outside of time. There is a kairos moment and then there's a chronos moment. Kairos is something that sits outside of time. And the chronos is a tick, tick. It's like a clock that sits inside of time. We do things in time. We do things in season. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to be born. And then there's a time to keep on doing things. And there's a time to stop. All of these specific times. But God is on the outside of time. Therefore, he's not moved by the emergencies that we have (laughs) in our lives. We don't answer, he doesn't answer to us, and we can't make him do anything. We must be obedient before we start making our demands, our demands. We, we have to make sure that we got ourselves straight before we come to the Father saying, you need to bless me. So what is the good news about that? I'm waiting, preach, I'm waiting, preach. I, I'm getting ready to tell you. Once again, our life is but a vapor in that no one has control of tomorrow, but only what you do with the time that God has given you today. There's one thing that all the sports people and all the people who play basketball, football, baseball, there's one thing that that the commentators, especially uh, the ones that I, you know the ones that I listen to? I listen to the ones that have won the championship. They have gotten it. I don't listen to the people that haven't gone anywhere. I listen to the ones that have gotten the championship. And one of the things they usually say is that this team is not playing with a sense of urgency. They're not playing with a sense of urgency. They don't feel like there is, they feel like all of these days are promised to them. Oh, no. Just like the song Far Side <laughs> sung a long time ago. He keeps on passing me by, passing me by. Keeps on passing. She keeps on passing me by. Da, 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 da. Passing me by. Life does not have to pass you by. Because although life is moving, you can move with it. Amen. Amen. It's what you do with what God has given you and not just let life happen to you. You don't need to be like the bear rug that's sitting on the floor with his mouth open. And everybody's just walking (laughs) across it. Well, nobody won't pick me up off of this floor. Nobody won't put no stuff in this out of me. I'm just going to stay here for the rest of my life. I ain't going to move. I ain't going to move. Somebody need to pick me up and put it back. You need to get out of the entitlement mentality. Oh, that's a hard saying right there. But, you know, sometimes we feel like we're owed something. Oh, my goodness. If I tell you how many times that I've had to work so hard for what I've had, and then I see some jitterbug just saying, well, why don't you just give me something? I get, I almost want to turn into uh, the Incredible Hulk and just, (laughs) (laughs) is that on tape? It's okay. It's all demonstration only. Once again, uh, in our eyes, we have forever, but the truth of the matter is is that we are in the land of the dying. One writer said that all the world is a stage, and how we conduct and manage our lives now is a practice run for eternity in heavenly bliss or the torment of hellfire. We don't like to hear that H-E-L-L-L word inside of church, but it is a true reality. Just like I said before, that uh, the greatest reward that Satan could give you is hell. That is his best reward. That's the best that he's got. But I'm reminded that what does God want to give you? He says he wants to give you blessings. He wants, to leave, wants you to leave inheritance for your children and your children's children. He wants to give you all of these things so that you don't even have to be even worried about that. Who will guide us? 
Who will cover us in the midst of the hills and the valleys of this life, which can end in seconds? We just had an event with my grandfather just a couple of weeks ago. I got his voice on voice recorder because something in my spirit said that it won't be long. It won't be long. And then we got the phone call last Friday that he is gone now. And even right before then, my uncle said that he was sitting in the back seat in the midst of his head being traumatized. And as they were taking him to the hospital and they were looking back in the back seat and they said, well, well they heard him talking. And they said, well, daddy or granddad, they call him daddy. But my granddaddy, who are you talking to? And he said, don't bother me right now. I'm talking to God. I'm talking to God. 94-year-old man in the midst of pain, in the midst of his brain, a blood hemorrhage in his brain. He had a massive stroke, and he's back there talking to God, telling him that he is ready to go. Oh, what a privilege would it be to where we will have enough relationship with God to let him know that we are ready to go. We have run the race. We have finished strong. But those of you that are in the land of the living, you can't say that it's time to give up just yet. You have to keep on going. What's the good news about that, Pastor Martin? I feel like giving up right now, it's too hard. It's too hard. Well, I've just given you a perspective of what hard is. Some of y'all have had an opportunity to go to college, go to high school. He didn't even have that opportunity. He was taken from his classroom at the age of nine, and he was working ever since then. That means that he almost had a, 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 a second or a third grade education. But yet, look at all of the abundance that he left behind. And he complained, not a word, throughout all of those 94 years. But yet we complain about our small little circumstance. It puts things in perspective, don't it? Great perspective. That's why I don't have a, a real leaning ear to complainers or those that are, are weak as it relates to working hard. You must work hard to get what God has for you in this life. You cannot relax. You cannot stop. I, I, I like when one person put a, a, a post up that said, rise and grind. And I took that out. I'm going to use that from this point on. Rise and grind. Give God the glory. Because eventually after you finish grinding, it's going to become smooth like the stones that David used to get rid of that Philistine. Who is this circum uncircumcised Philistine or this big giant Goliath thing in my life? I've been grinding hard, but now I've got some smooth stones and I'm getting ready to whoop, 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 knock that big obstacle down out of my life. Who will guide us? Who will cover us in the midst of the hills and valleys of this life, which can end in seconds? Better yet, what choices do we need to make that will lead to success in the natural and the spirit? So many choices, one writer says, so little time. So what's the good news? Well, 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 one of the things that I wanted to share with you is this, and it comes from out of Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2. And this is what you, what, 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 what you need to dial up when you need an emergency response. When my phone is on, doo, 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 when, when you we can't get me, I almost need to do like the old folks back in the day and put my phone on busy signal. If I'm there, I'll pick it up. If I ain't there, you get a busy signal. I'm just saying, y'all. Uh, it, it says right here, when you need an emergency response, it says this, it says to go to Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2, and it says this, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. That's what you do when you need an emergency response, and you have no man that you can go to. One of the most difficult things that men and women of God that we have is, the, is, the, is that we need to be fathered by God and we are not allowed to be fathered by God. We want to have a person in there that's going to groom us and there's nothing wrong with that. We have mentors, but eventually God is going to take away that map and he's going to give you a compass and he's going to say, go. Go that way. Go west, young man. Go west. <laughs> go west. Abraham said, get thee out of the country and of, away from your kinfolk, away from your family. I have a place that I want to show you, and I'll tell you when you get there. <laughs> How does it going to feel? We did an exercise in, our, in one of our men's groups just this past uh, weekend to where the young man told us all to sit up against the wall, and he took a pair of keys, 
and he threw some keys on the, on the ground, but we couldn't get those pair of keys until we closed our eyes. So we, we had all of our eyes closed, and he threw the keys on the ground, and he said, Andre, go. And then I got on my hands and knees, and I started feeling around, bumping into chairs. That's just how it is in life. We don't like not knowing where we're going. One of the main diseases that men have that Jesus healed was blindness. The blind man, the blind man. A man is nothing unless he has a vision. So I wanted to open up my eyes. I said, "Uh uh-uh, I need help. (laughs) I ain't even try to find it on my own. Because I know, just like this ministry, I can't do it on my own. No, 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 no. I'll kill myself, and I want to be long. I want to be busting the devil's head for the next 35, 40 years. And since I want to do that, I can't do everything by myself. I said, I need help, and I left the keys right there. Because I didn't have enough sense to know. Now, if I was in my younger days, I would have uh, just kept on standing on the floor for 35, 45 minutes, and now I just kept on sitting. But no, I stood up, opened up my eyes, and I said, I need help. And I went right to the back. And all the young, younger men, they just went right straight to it. I was like, yeah, that's good. I was just like that back in the day. They just went straight to it. And what? now they pick up them thieves, and they say, look at this, look at this. What, what, what? I was like, no, I need help. I need help. So what do you need when, so that's what you, the scripture that you go to when you need an emergency response. That's the good news if you have an emergency in your life. The next bit of good news is that when you don't know how things will work out, the answer is this, and it comes from out of Romans chapter 8 verse 28, and it says, and we know (laughs) that all things work together for those who love God to those who are called according to to his purpose. When you have a purpose in life, when you have a destiny in your, in your life, you have to know and you have to understand that everything will work out for the good of those that love God. If you love God and you keep his commandments and you do the best that you can, he said, just like he said to David, David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. I, I, I have never seen it be to where, where the world says that the last or the good guys finish last. No, no, no. The Bible says that the last will be first and the first will be last. So which one are you going to listen to? Are you going to be double-minded just like the, the, the wheat? You, you can't be all over the place. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, unshakable in the word of God. When your enemies, another bit of good news, when your enemies are coming against you. What's the good news? What that? Well, Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 17 and 18 says, But I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. Verse 18 says, For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword. God says that I will deliver you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but your life shall be like a prize to you. Because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. When you put your trust in God, when you put your faith in God, and stop being so wishy-washy and so driven by your emotions, you got to get your emotions in check and your feelings in check, even if you don't feel like it. No, no. Get yourself together, soldier. Get in line. And let's go ahead and let's fight the devil. Let's go ahead and get out of this circumstances. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Who is the king of glory, strong and mighty? If you want to follow me as I follow Christ, you got to be a hard soldier. You got to be a soldier. You got to be one that be just like, if, if you want to be a general of the faith, just I was telling somebody the other day, if you want to be a general of the faith, you have to have the thinking cap. Or the helmet of salvation. You have to have the boots or your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. If you don't want people to get to your heart and get into your emotions, that you need to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which not only guards your heart, but it keeps those darts from being penetrated in your back. If you really want to make sure that you get your enemies and you don't want to go empty-handed, then you need to have the sword of the spirit. So that means that I do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but but uh, but with powers or principalities or spiritual weakness in dark places. I, I know that I fight with the sword of the spirit spirit and I make sure that that if it gets too heavy for me that I need to make sure that I put on the shield of faith when I can't believe in anybody else when people are letting me down when mama daddy sister brother auntie uncle even the man on the corner that's sitting on the Wheaties box if I can't believe them I need to make sure that I have the shield of faith so that when the fiery darts start getting and start coming towards me and I could just like Captain America I could take that thing and boomerang and it come right back in my hands 
Because God said that he, everything that proceeds out of his mouth will not come back void. Oh, I'm preaching right here. He says your enemies come against you. God says that you need to trust in him and then your life will be a prize. If you trust in God. If you want to have what I have, if you want to do, if you want to be blessed and have people just doing and blessing and blessing, you got to rise and grind and give God the glory. You have to rise and grind and give God the glory until that rough path becomes smooth. Everybody has a test. Everybody has a trial. No one in this life has been given anything and no one is going to give you anything. No one. So you need to smile. And trust me when I tell you, I love opportunity. Opportunity, opportunity is knocking at your door. Opportunity knocks but once, so don't come back no more. Grab it in the night. Grab it. It was, it was wonderful. I'm going to grab the opportunity. If you don't get the blessing, I'm going to snatch it and grab it for myself. Amen. When we were out in the street, we just didn't wait. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, when we were shooting dice and whatnot and somebody left some money behind, I'm not going to be a good Samaritan and just leave it there. I'm going to put it in my pocket because I saw it was an opportunity. Even back then, if I saw somebody when I was going into the street, I was looking for a fight. And I saw somebody turned around and they said something about my mama. I didn't wait until they turned towards it. I popped them in there. It was an opportunity. So ill it is in the natural. It should be in the spirit. Now that I have been redeemed halfway. <laughs> Now I won't, wait. I won't have your head turned around. I'll wait until you face me, and then I'll get you. <laughs> so if that is the case, and if we are to you know, see ourselves fighting in the natural, then we should also fight in the spirit. I'm here to encourage you this morning. If you feel sick in your body, so what's the good news about that? I don't feel good. I'm not healing. My knee is messed up. I prayed for three years in a row for my knee to be healed, for a decision that I made. I was the one who went out there like I was Bo Jackson and then get out there and my knee went that way and my kneecap went that way and my limb went that way. <laughs> All because I was trying to relive a dream that God said that it's not the season anymore. Your season has passed, young man. Your season has passed. So if you feel sick in your body, even this morning, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 says, but he who was wounded. For our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, he says that we are healed. He are, we are healed. We are healed from the sickness and disease. That's why they said that, that, that Jesus was hit with 40 stripes. There are 40 known pathological root diseases in all of mankind. And Jesus took a lick for each one. And yet he kept on ticking. He took a licking and kept on ticking. He was getting down. And, and even Jesus, he, was, he had his cross to bear. He kept on moving forward. So how in the world you, old young man, an old young woman or old man, old woman, has this great destiny and you are starting to buckle. And Jesus, the wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the rose of Sharon, still got up regardless. But preacher, he was God. And all oh man. But Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If that is the case, then, 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 then I know that with Christ, there is nothing that is impossible. But you must have faith in God. A little bit more good news. If people like good news. Well, look, once again, it says when you need to make a tough decision. This is what I do when I need to go into the word of God. and I'm just like sitting in the bed and I'm rolling. Lord, what am I going to do about this? I had righteous indignation last night. My wife will tell you, I was hot about something. And somebody was going to get it. But somebody told me, or angel told me, you just need to be calm and hold your peace, young man. Hold your peace. Hold your peace, young man. Amen. Because even a good general does not react to everything that's swirling around. If you want to be a general of the faith, then you're going to get your stripes. You got to go through some trials. You got to go through some tests. You got to go through some pain. You got to go through some agony. No pain. No pain. No pain. No gain. In order to get something, you got to go through something. No pain. No, 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 no pain. Betty White. I'm telling you, if, it, if, that, if, if they understand that in the R&B world, then how much more do we have to understand that when we're fighting not only against natural things, but spiritual things. Amen. 
When you need to make a tough decision, Proverbs 11, verse 14, in the New King James Version says, When there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But we need to make sure that there's a clarification to that. For the scripture says that uh, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That means that that multitude of counsel must be the multitude of godly counsel. Godly counsel, godly advice, godly representation. I don't want to be around you if you got a buzzard mentality. If you don't want to do nothing, then I'm not going to say nothing to you. I'm just going to keep on moving. If you don't want to do something in the ministry, then I'm going to replace you. I'm going to keep on doing it because I know that's what God does. He says that if you don't want to do nothing, I will raise up someone else in your place. It's tight, but it's right. Because I know that I used to sit on my laurels and wait for the world to give me something. I had an entitlement welfare-like mentality. Nothing against that because everybody has their own struggle, but I'm talking about in spiritual things where you just wait for someone to give you something and you don't fight for it. You got to fight. You got to have a winner's mentality. Y'all be in the club and all I do is win, 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 and your hands go up and they stay there and they stay there. So if you understand that, then why don't you get inside of the word of God and get inside of the house of the Lord and then put your hands up and then let them stay there. Why? Because you cannot lose with Jesus Christ. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means he not only put the beginning of the book right there with the table of conscience, with all the chapters and the lines, the line upon line, the precept upon precept in the very beginning, but he also has the ending chapter and he knows how all of those pages are going to go, whether it's good or bad. You put that book together and there you have the facts of life, the facts of life. Oh, you'll get that. You watch that show just like I did. Next up, we have this bit of good news. If you are having an identity crisis, you don't know which way you're going to go. You're bipolar. <laughs> Split up. You're going this way and that way at the same time. You split up. You don't, you, wh 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 where do I go? Which way do they go? Just like the Keystone Cop. If you got Keystone Cop mentality, the Bible has a remedy. The good news of that says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. The only way that you can change your destiny is that you change your thinking. The only way. We are a product of our thinking. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind based on spiritual things, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is simple. I'll give you a simple remedy of this. Whatever you feed will grow. If you feed the evil part of your nature, that's what's going to grow. If you feed the good part of your nature, that's what's going to grow. If you feed yourself the things of this world, then the world is going to grow inside of you. Even if you sit there and do nothing, that is world, that is slothfulness, that is laziness. If you feed yourself with just sitting there, then you are not going to grow. But if you feed yourself the word of God, then you're going to grow and it's going to magnify. I heard one old uh, 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 preacher said that the Lord is enlarging. He's stretching himself inside of me. So therefore, I don't have any room to do anything else. God, great God. When you're having an identity crisis, don't know what to do. The Bible says be conformed. Now, don't be conformed to this. Don't go to the pattern of this world. You don't have to be successful doing it like everybody else. You have a living example of someone right here in the pulpit that did it God's way, and it was not easy. But I could rest my head against the pillow of peace. Hallelujah. Some people can't sleep. The Bible says that he loves those that he gives rest to. So if you are up all night, you need to evaluate yourself. I'm not talking about him waking you up in the midnight hour and asking you to pray. No, no, I'm talking about when you are turmoil and you got all types of church in your brain, God in your brain, church in your brain. He's trying to, he's basically saying you are a spiritual being. You can't be double-minded. You can't be on both sides of the fence because you're going to fall on, well, I'm just saying. Maybe I'm preaching right there. That'll hurt. Mm. Okay, well, once again, the next bit of good news, if you want the wisdom to gain and keep wealth. Oh, there it is right here. This is the, well, Pastor Martin, I'm, it's just so hard out here. And, uh, I've had a no job before. Well, you just don't understand. Look at what you got now. That was a long, that was a 10-year process. Well, I don't want to go through all those years. Look at how old I am. But that's fine. My parents are older too. I want to eliminate all those excuses. Uh, one person told me a long time ago that the, uh, 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 he said, excuses are the tools of the incompetent used to build monuments of nothingness. Excuses 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 you can't do something okay 
got something going on? All right, fine. You come to me, get another excuse? Okay, fine. After a while, I ain't going to ask you no more. And that's the same way God is. If you want to be a good soldier and get all your stripes, this is the path that you have to go. If you want wisdom to gain and keep wealth, the good news that the, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, it says, on the first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper so that no collections be made when I come. Oh, Lord, there it is. <laughs> Collection man at your door. They don't even do that. Yes, they do. Right House Networks, they'll come to your house if you don't pay. <laughs> they did a throwback. They said, oh, they, you know, there's a whole bunch of people out here. I'm going to go and you there? <laughs> well, hey, Miss Martin, you know, <laughs> I'm preaching because I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Sometimes I have to put it on every now and then. <laughs> but I take it right back up because I remember what the scripture says. But notice how it says put aside and save. God wants you to be productive. He doesn't want you to just sit there saying, well, you know, it's going to do it. You got to work in the middle of you working. I did, I did work today to get paid today. Labor ready. But Pastor Martin, you just don't understand. I did work today, paid today. I went out there, and I dig those ditches with a degree, with a master's degree, and I humbled myself, and I got down there, and I got that shovel, and I got on the side of the road, and I picked up leaves, and I did lawns, and I hustled, and I hustled that way. And I could still lay my head on a pillow of peace instead of complaining. Oh, boy, don't like me today. Well, that's okay. I have to preach in season or out of season. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 through 12 in God's word translation says, whoever can be trusted with very little, oh, I'm preaching this morning, can also be trusted with a lot. Whoever is dishonest with very little is dishonest with a lot. Therefore, if you can't be trusted with the wealth that is often used dishonestly, who will trust you with wealth that is real? Verse 12 says, if you can't be trusted with someone else's wealth, who will give you your own? Be faithful in another man's work. You got to put some skin in the game. Amen. You want to know how much skin in the game that I have with all the investment that I have with y'all? Y'all see how I walk around and I say, hello, how you doing? Sorry I can't get through. Why don't you leave your name and your number and I'll get back to you. And I do. And I not only do that with words, but I also do with that with actions. And I also do with my pocket. I've invested $20,000 in this place of my own money. So therefore, if you toss it over, I might grab you a little bit. I have to restrain myself because I know as much as I invested in this place. You may not care, but I do. But eventually, if you take on my spirit, you will also care as well. Amen. I know that's, pre that's hard preaching right there. Oh, well, welcome to Divine Truth Christian Center where God wants your dreams and visions realized. When you want to know who to hang around, the good news is, is that it, it says this in Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 just I already said a little bit earlier, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, no stands in the path or stands like a sinner not stand in the way of or trying to block a sinner but you act like a sinner you in church but you act like off the chain <laughs> I'm not saying you got issues everybody got issues, I got issues but I'm talking about you just butt naked out there you just Hey, drinking and everything, smoking and all that stuff. You just doing whatever you want to do, and then you want God to bless you. How can he do that? What type of standard do you think he has? Godly standards. Be a ministry of men. You have to be a person of excellence, and this ministry will be one of excellence. Watch this. No sits in the seat of the scornful. That means you can't have a scornful, I'm going to get you sucker attitude. Sitting right there, mad bad attitude. I don't like it. I don't like you. I ain't going to do nothing, and I ain't going to know it. You ain't going to make me. Go right ahead. The world's going to pass you right on by. And nobody's going to not feel sorry for you either. Verse number two says, but his delight, the good man says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a what? Tree with branches, leaves, shade, tree, planted by the rivers of living water. Therefore, that means that even though it's very bright outside and hot outside, he ain't going to be like, oh, I need some water. He waits until the water comes. He still provides shade that, that, that whoever gets up under, he still has shade. That means the tree is an ultimate provider. If it's in a storm, the tree's right out there. When we run inside of the house and talk about, so turn the lights off, it's lightning. The tree is right out there in the midst of the storm. Swaying back and forth. 
We're supposed to be like the tree. Notice my feet are not moving. The top is moving. That means it's not, not going to affect you. It's not going to hurt you. But you, if you stay rooted in the word of God, when the storm passes, you're going to be like, what's happening? And then you get all of the sun. You get all of the sun. The sun. The, you get all of the sun's blessings. <laughs> Somebody didn't get that. You get all of the sun. That just like you, the tree gets all of the S-U in sun blessings and all of its radiance and all of its light. You will get the S-O-N's blessing when you stay rooted in the word of God. He shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. The water symbolizes the word of God that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Notice how it is a caveat. You need to walk in the counsel of the godly, then your ways will prosper. If you hang around a bunch of off the chain, off ungodly folk, then your ways will not prosper. But preacher, I make money out here in the streets, I understand. But remember, the highest reward that the devil has for you is hell. So it may be good for a little while, but eventually it will run out and it has a high cost. Sold my soul to the devil just like Snoop Dogg. Okay, he's doing, he's popular and all that other stuff like that. But then when God comes knocking on your door, he's going to ask you, okay, well, what did you do with your life? The ultimate reward is well done, not good, and not faithful server. Get on in with Peter and all of them. Hallelujah. Choices, decisions that we make. If you want to know what the future holds, Matthew chapter 4, 24, verse 4 through 8, and I'm almost done, and it says, verse 4, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Somalia, wars and rumors of war, seeing that you are not troubled, you shouldn't be shaken by that. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You can't go to heaven just yet. Heaven is my home. You're still on the earth right now. You got to do something for the Lord right now. Verse 7 says, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Hasn't all of that happened? Look at CNN and you see how all of that is happening. You don't have to have your head in the sand. You take your head up out of the sand with your ostrich self. Looking around. You want to be looking around. (laughs) Jesus said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. But he says, he said that he sent the comforter so that you'll be comforted during these times and the turbulences. Don't you think the tree knows that the storm is coming? All the storms that we have day after day after day, the tree is still right there. I still see that same tree right there. A bunch of storms done passed, but the tree is still right there. Why is that? Because he knows how to stay steadfast. And we should be like a tree. If Jesus is the tree of life, and Satan eats from the tree or gives people the tree of the knowledge and good and evil, then we need to make sure that we eat of the tree of life or have communion with the Holy Father through Jesus Christ. If you want to know what love is, I did a message a little while ago. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me the old school 80s tune. Well, if you want to know what love is, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7 says, love is patient and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, it's not puffed up or arrogant, does not have to behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity or constant sin, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. And the scripture goes on to say, love never fails. Well, that's God. God is love. If you want to know what God is, if you want to know what love is, and you want me to show you, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7 shows you what God is. And if we are supposed to be in this image and likeness, oh, let me keep on going. Next up, what's the next piece of good news? If you want to know if God loves you, and this is where I close. Famous piece of scripture that you see on the eye black of Tim Tebow. It says, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, That he gave his only begotten son. That's why God doesn't like stingy folk because he gave his best. So why would you give your worst? (laughs) It's tight, but it's right. For God so loved his world, but he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have 
everlasting life. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 through 39. I'm coming around the mountain. Right here it says, verse 37, yet in all these things that we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded <laughs> that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things, nor things present or things to come. No height, nor depth, nor anything created or any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We separate ourselves from God, but God said he will never, ever, ever put your money on it, put your weight on it. He won't separate himself from us. It is us who distance from him. Stuff guard getting crazy, start getting rocky. You better see what your distance between yourself and God is. Check and see your distance. Check your long distance package. <laughs> Check your calling car. Who are you calling on when things get rough? Partners, homeboys, homegirls? Sister, brother, mom, and dad, or you sitting in your head and you start having all those wild thoughts within yourself. You just stay in your mind all day, all night. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I'll set your long distance package. Maybe you just need to switch your calling plan <laughs> and have a direct line to God, which is in prayer, in supplication, in petition, and working on your knees. My mother's knees were black from pray, pray, praying for us. Black. And she showed them to me. As many times she prayed for us. There is power in prayer. But most of us want to stand up and don't want to bow ourselves to God. We want to stand up in our mess instead of bow in his blessings. So what's the good news? The good news is, is that all of the benefits that I've outlined for you, health, wealth, finances, a good life, uh, 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 peace, uh, uh, tranquility, prosperity, all of those things are in the word, but you got to work that thing. If you ain't working it, it ain't going to happen. I'm going to tell you it again. If you ain't working the word, if you ain't walking the walk and talking the talk, it ain't going to happen. You can do what you want to do. You can live how you want to live. I can't make you do anything, but if you ain't going to attach and take that opportunity, I sure never will, and the people around you will too. Maybe you will too. Maybe you'll take the opportunity that God has given you with your blessed and talented self. The most richest place, as many people have heard, many people heard this phrase before, the richest place in the whole world is inside of the grave. Untapped or untapped talent, untapped blessing. People die with the secret to maybe having gas be only a dollar <laughs> and they take it to the grave with them all because they wanted people to feel sorry for themselves. I ain't going to feel sorry for you. And God isn't either. When God has compassion, he has compassion on those that are trying with all of their might and getting beat down in the process. He says that he will uh, mount you up with wings upon eagles. He wants you to run and not get weary. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have fa I don't know what it look like, but have faith in God. I don't have any money, but have faith in God. I don't have any finances. My people are acting crazy. I still got this habit. Have faith in God. Nobody's coming to my event. Have faith in God. Been through all of that. And some of y'all are right there, right now. You got to have faith in God. You don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you see. The football players, when the, they used to do like this. Can't, you can't see me. You can't see me. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, I can. Can I can see you. But no, basically they were saying, you can't see me. I got this. I'm a conqueror. I'm going to score. So I'm encouraging you this morning that God has already placed all of the playbooks <laughs> inside of you, which is the word of God. This right here. He wants you to take this playbook <laughs> for all of the, the sports analogies. He, he wants you to take this playbook with basketball, football. You take these plays. And you know what the football player do? They ain't got nothing else to do right now. Well, I'm just saying. He, <laughs> he wants you to take all of the plays, just like the rookies and even the veterans. Oh, that's a revelation in itself. The rookies as well as the veterans always have to study the playbook so that when it comes time for them to play the game, they'll be able to execute the plays. The better you execute the plays, even though you may have talent, if you have a whole bunch of talent, like some football players had a whole bunch of talent, and they still could not execute the plays, and they're out of the NFL right now. 
You got some people that are, have no talent and they execute the plays like Don Beebe, <laughs> Wes Welker. They didn't have the physical stature, but they execute those plays and they become pro bowl people. God wants you to be a pro in his word. Get this word. You read this word. You read the playbook. Basic instructions before leaving earth, Bible. You take this word and you read the playbook and you go over the playbook over and over and over again. So anytime you get down and out, don't know what to do, don't have nothing, all this other stuff, you execute the plays. It's all about execution. If I put this, I remember one preacher that was preaching, when his son was preaching, they put the Bible on his head, just like this. <laughs> the Bible is not going to get in your head through osmosis. It ain't going to ooze in now. If you don't open it up, ain't nothing going in. If you don't open it up, it ain't going in. I wish I could just... I've seen a preacher do that. I like that sometimes. But the truth of the matter is, is that it ain't going to do nothing unless it goes in there. The best teams have talent plus team execution for y'all, your Miami Heat people out there. Oh, I'm preaching real hard right now. Difference, talent, execution, less talent. One team wanted it more than the other. One team said that I could do it the place ground way. I could be boastful. I could do all of this. I know I like, I like, I like LeBron. I like all of it. But there's a lesson in that. Both of them had good coaches, but a lot of those people had pride. Oh, what a humble thing it is to have a whole bunch of talent and not win. I'm preaching hard, ain't I? Bill Belichick, football, Patriots. I can't stand them either. <laughs> I'm a New York Giants fan. That one year that we won, we didn't have no talent. <laughs> but yet we executed them plays. And here's the thing. Even when something goes wrong, God will step in and give you the anointing. Just like David Tyree had that football sticking on top of his head and he didn't touch the ground. God will do the same thing. So for all of you that don't think that you have it all together, God will take his super and put it on your natural. And therefore you could do supernatural exploits in this earth realm. He will do that. Pastor Martin, you got, you got all this and all that. The way that I got it is that I executed the plays over the long term. 10, 15 year period. Sometimes I didn't see nothing. And even right now, God is putting me in the next phase. What are you going to do with this big old plaza? Are you just going to stay in the space? No, of course not. Some people be happy just being right here. No, I want the whole thing. Amen. How are we going to get the whole thing? I don't know. I don't have no clue. <laughs> I'm just going to follow God. That's it. And we're going, God is going to raise up leaders among the congregation here and even outside of here that don't even go to church. That's going to help the vision to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Bless people of God. I love you. It's tight. But if I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Be blessed people of God. At this moment in time, we want to prepare ourselves for our altar call. Amen. If you need prayer right now, just come forward. If you just want to sit in his presence, just come forward, kneel down and pray. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Amen. God will not get tired of you coming to him. God will not get tired of you coming to him. I know it's hard. I know it doesn't feel good. Amen. Amen. It doesn't feel good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You don't think that I wasn't out there grinding and hustling and slinging and smoking and drinking and doing all this stuff? I done did all of that. God just graced me. I could have been caught so many times, y'all, walking out of dealers with plenty of polo shirts. Did all of that. And I, had, I was in college at the same time. Just crazy. But God. But God, many of you may be in a situation where you feel like you can't get nothing done unless God steps in. That is exactly where God wants you to be. I know it's hard out there. So what do you do when it is a hard time or a hard place? No matter how small that job is or how small it may be, you be on time. You get out there. You keep on applying for those jobs. You keep on serving God. You keep on coming into the house of the Lord. You keep on doing what you're doing. You don't stop. You can't be, you have to have a, a pit bull mentality. 
You can't let go. You got to have locked jaw on the destiny that God wants for you. You can't let that thing go. People have families that are split up. You want People want children back in the midst of them. I've been there. I understand that. You can't give up on that. Some people need husbands and need wives. Some people are praying for a husband and wife to come back home again. Some people are praying for children to come back in the midst again. Don't stop praying. Don't stop until you get that blessing. Amen. I want to encourage you. I want to speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on God. You can depend on God. He is not going to stop loving you through the situation that you are in. There may not be any money in the household. It may be a situation where it's dry, the cupboards are bare, you ain't got no money, the food stamp office is closed, all that stuff is going on. But yet and still, believe God. Yes. Believe God. Believe God. My wife and I were unemployed at the same time, but yet we believe God. Nobody called, but yet we believe God. We didn't have anybody coming to the ministry for eight months in a row. A trial and testing of a faith, setting up equipment, putting equipment down, putting it in the U-Haul over and over again, every single Sunday. But we believe God. So I want uh, that anointing to flow from my head and down my beard, down to you. You got to fight the devil. You got to fight the devil. You got to fight the devil. You got to fight for what God has called you into. Destiny, blessings, prosperity, health, wealth, an un, a, a, a unfettered, a unwavering devotion to him. Not only in your presence, and not just being here, but producing something. God wants you to bear fruit. Produce. It's time to produce now. It's time to do what God has always wanted you to do. You never got a different job. Maybe now's the time to switch. Never went to school. Maybe it's time to go back. Never tried to uh, work today, pay today. Maybe it's time for you to do it. Maybe you need to go ahead and go inside of a dishwashing office and humble yourself and go beg the man for that job so that you could get to the next level. Maybe you need to save up for that, for that court cost. Maybe you just need to do that. Maybe you need to take that janitorial job. Maybe you need to cut grass. I don't know what you got to do. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just ask you, to pour your blessings upon everyone in this place. Send your anointing, oh God. Send your presence, oh God. Send your, your fresh, breathe life into these people again, oh God. Breathe life into them, oh God. Breathe life into them, oh God. It is not easy. It's not being a man or a woman in this world. It's not easy doing the right thing. It's not the easiest thing. But God said, have faith in him and trust him. Weeping may endure for a night, but the psalmist says that joy will come in the morning. I'm preaching right here. Uh, he said that he will bless you and he will take care of you. How much more are you than the sparrows that are outside? And the birds of the air, the fowl of the, uh, fowl, uh, the birds of the air, the fish in the sea. He feeds and takes care of them. How much more valuable are you? You are so valuable. You are so important. You are so blessed. Do what God wants you to do so you could get free. Who the Son, Jesus Christ, sets free, he and she will be free indeed. You might need to go to Winn-Dixie and bag groceries until your dream comes to pass. You might have to work two and three jobs until it comes to pass. I had to do that. I had to. And I did not complain. You are a mighty, mighty in God. Powerful. Blessed. More than conquerors. 
singers, psalmists, dancers. God has placed all of these things inside of you. You just got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Give them the anointing to do it. Rain fresh on their heads, oh God. Lift up their heads. Lift up their spirits. Encourage them in this time of famine. Send them in the place of Goshen, oh God. Protect them in this particular place. and Protect them in this time that we are in. Give them sustenance. Give them prosperity. Give them wealth. Give them encouragement, oh God. Lift them up, oh God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Midnight is at the darkest hour, but morning is 1201. If you endure, even in the midnight of your situation, in the midnight of your circumstances, it is still going to be dark in the next day. But you got to hold on. Hold on.